Back. Turbin. Oh yeah, Robert Turbin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it Thanks. right. We'll get it right. <laughs> Which you know, but very well, it might be the case because Mac got hurt on Sunday. I mean, Monday, uh, Thursday, and so we'll we'll see how how that uh, that plays out. We're waiting to see if Mo from the BS Sports Show joins us. Hopefully, he he gets to uh, jump in here on on the conversation uh, as well. But yeah, you're right. Anytime you you can look at those teams with the uh, running back by committee, and this is going to be kind of a new scenario for the Colts to use that running back by committee. So you're absolutely right about that. Mark Eagleman of the New Orleans Saints. What are your thoughts about him? He's with the New Orleans Saints. He's a running back. Mark Ingram. Um, he uh, oh, I had a lot of work for Ingram. I wouldn't worry about Mark Ingram for the Saints. I worry no, about Alvin Kamara. That's the one you want to pick up. <laughs> no, what I'm talking. Going, but I'm sorry, we'll have to backtrack here a little bit for you there, Rick. I was talking about a lot, if you've got a late round pick in the first round, or you're going into the second round, and all of the studs, the fantasy football studs are off the board, players that you mm-hmm. might want to look at that can, can be a, an asset to you, you're going to have to pick up people that might end up being trade bait. If, you, if you're drafting middle to late in the first round, and if you're on a snake draft, and you're able to get, uh, by the time you can come back around, so you're going to draft, and then you're going to draft again. In the, so you're never going to get in that away from that middle of the pack if you're in a snake draft. So you're going to pick up a lot of mediocre players, and you're going to have to make the decision between a a a uh, a Rex Burkhead of, of New England or a Mark Ingram of, of New or New New Orleans. So that that's where that came from. Are you there? Uh, Sorry, yeah, I'm having problems here. Uh, but as far as Mark Ingram goes, hey, he wouldn't. He would. He he'd be like a really late draft pick for me. I wouldn't pick him up second or third round if all the other studs were gone. Uh, there's a lot of running backs that are going to get a lot more workload than Mark Ingram will. You know, with Alvin Kamara stepping in the way he did last year, uh, Ingram's uh, almost going to be an afterthought. What about Jarvis Landry with the Browns? Well, that's going to fall on uh, the quarterback play. When you look at receivers, you got to look at the quarterback is. You can have a stud receiver, but they don't have anybody to throw the ball to them. They're not going to get you very many points. So right now, the way it looks and all the rumors are, Tyrod Taylor is actually going to be a starter in Cleveland, which I think that's a huge mistake because I just think Bayfield will be a better leader. Tyrod Taylor is like 30 years old now, so he don't have much time anyway. Uh, he hasn't done anything in the NFL up to this point to be a starting quarterback. Uh, even though he was a starter in Buffalo, that didn't work out all that great. Uh, I just think it's time to give Baker Mayfield a shot. I know since the year 2000 or whatever it has been, 1999, uh, Cleveland's had like a brand-new starting quarterback like every single year, so maybe that's why they're just holding off this year on starting Baker Mayfield so early. But if Tyrod Taylor's the, the going to be the starting quarterback, then uh, Jarvis Landry is probably not going to get you very many points. Well, wouldn't you think if Baker Mayfield is the quarterback, then you would want him? Because I think Baker Mayfield is going to be the quarterback there at Cleveland. Well, just so far, all the indication is that uh, he's not going to be the starter you know, right off the bat. Well, we'll see what happens. Well, we will see what happens. Well, uh, certainly our, our um, fantasy football preview, I wanted to have Mo on. I, he said he was coming on. I tell you what, you you depend on people, and it's just you run late because you're done. So you know, it's just this, <laughs> that, that, that. hey, Deshaun Watson out of out of Texas, super stud last year, and then he got hurt. So a lot of things are uh, Deshaun Watson's got to be kind of like an Andrew Luck scenario. It, it's like you don't know, you really don't know. But he was kind of a stud last year, but I, I look for his value to drop off this year. But what are your thoughts about Deshaun Watson? Yeah, you just don't know, you know, when you get injured like that, what what you come back as, you know, if it, a shell of your former self, or do you come back as your former self? If he comes back as his former self, uh, that's a dangerous team, and he's going to get you a lot of points of fantasy football. They've already got so him we, as like a tier two elite as it is right now, even after the injury. So uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what Deshaun Watson can do after that injury. 
You know, we haven't talked much about the tight ends. We did mention Jack Doyle a while ago. But O.J. Howard, a tight end for the Buccaneers, you got to be looking at him. And again, tight ends aren't somebody that you're going to draft in your first round, second round. They are going to be someone you're going to be looking at in your third round, fourth round, and later on. So tight ends aren't going to be your, your first round picks. You wouldn't think so uh, unless they're a, a, an extraordinary type scenario. Uh, but uh, O.J. Howard with the Buccaneers, what are your thoughts? Uh, it, it goes back to who your quarterback is. And right now, is is, is Jameis Winston suspended for uh, – who's going to be the starter these first few weeks for uh, – Alex Smith, isn't Tampa it? Bay. Isn't it Ale- now, isn't Alex, it Alex Smith? Smith? Is this, Alex Smith is a starter for uh, the Redskins. Oh, that's so, right. Uh, well, stand by. You threw a curveball on me there. <laughs> We we will find yeah, out. It, it, Google is all knowing. It all, it all comes down to. Who, oh yeah, so like I'd Ryan. stay away from uh, OJ Howard, even though he's really like a crazy athletic uh, tight end. But it just comes down to who your quarterback is and who's going to be feeding the ball to him. And Ryan Fitzpatrick's like sixty three years old, so uh, I would say stay away from OJ Howard. Like you know, or I wouldn't definitely wouldn't draft him as my number one tight end, based well, off Ryan Fitzpatrick being his uh, quarterback. Well, let's be clear in what you're saying here. You're not saying – when you say number one tight end, you're talking about who you would use as your starter, not who you would draft. Right. You would not ever yeah, draft a tight end in the first one. Okay. A lot of people know that. You would never – drafting a tight end in the first round is like drafting a kicker or a defense in the first round. And I love it because you can tell people sometimes when they don't set their, their projections or they don't, they're not paying attention and they, they forget it's draft day, and boom, right off the board, first round uh, – the Bone Crushers pick uh, the defense of the Washington Redskins. You're like, what? <laughs> what did right. that come from? So yeah, it, don't don't draft. Don't be that guy that drafts a tight end in the first in the, in the uh, first round. I wanted to talk with Kyle, and I had this on my notes and just totally forgot about Juju Smith with the with the Steelers. What are your thoughts about him? Uh- I, I, Juju Smith Schuster, uh, I think he's going to put up some pretty good points this year. He's going to be uh, sharing the uh, workload with, uh, with AB, but uh, I, as your tight end three or something like that, that could be great for that position. So let's kind of talk a little bit about uh, wide receiver three. What I say, tight end three, wide receiver three, I think it'd be great. Yeah, he's a wide receiver. Yeah. W W R three. <laughs> So, what, what? What? Who are some of like maybe some of the you would be you would be looking? At? What about Marcus Mariota with the Titans? A lot of people are looking at the Titans, and I and I hate to say this because I hate to just say negative karma against the Colts because they're in the same division as the Colts. Colts have a lot of work to do. I I look for them to win eight or nine games this year. I really really do. That may or may not be enough to get them in the playoffs. It may or may not be enough for them to win. The division, I highly unlikely they're going to win the division, especially when you look at the improvement of Jacksonville, look at the improvement of Tennessee. But Marcus Mariota is part of that evolving picture with uh, Tennessee. But a lot of people are thinking, well, Marcus, I'm not that impressed by you. What are your thoughts? Uh, I, I I think Marcus Mariota is going to take a step closer to one of the elite guys this year in the NFL. I mean, it, it's it's the the Titans are loaded from the coaching staff uh, on down. It's just all got to come together with that new coaching staff now, just being their first year. Uh, they're going to be pretty good. This ain't going to be the year, but they are going to contend for the win that division this year, and they might win it next year because I, I, I think they're on the way up. I, I think uh, Jacksonville might take a step back from last year, and I think Houston, if Deshaun Watson plays great, uh, it's probably going to be uh, – they're probably the best team in the division, probably going to win the division. I think the Colts, unfortunately, Tom, are probably about a six-win team. And joining us now, calling us uh, live from the Millennial Falcon, is Mo from the BS Sports Show. How are you, sir? <laughs> uh, good. Uh, it sounds like you're you're flying in outer space there, sir. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm driving. <laughs> it's all good. Hey, so we, we've been talking a little bit about uh, preseason. Well, let's talk since we got you on here. Let's talk a little bit about your uh, thoughts on what you saw in the preseason games. Again, just preseason, but it was nice to see Luck take a hit, get up, and 
You would have thought he scored a touchdown with Jack Doyle, but my gosh, it was good to see him, uh, as Rick would say, knock the rim off. Oh, knock the ring off the rust, rust off the ring. Isn't that what you say, Rick? Knock, knock the rust off the rust. Off rust. <laughs> knock off the ring rust, yeah. <laughs> Good to see him do that. Uh, what were your thoughts on the Colts and the, on the Seahaw- uh, Seahawks? I, I, I'll be honest, I did not stay up for the whole game. I, I did stay to see him play. I was surprised that they, they took him on to the first part of the second quarter. Uh, but uh, what were your thoughts overall, Colts, uh, Andrew Luck? Well, uh, I'll get to Andrew Luck in a second. First off, I think the Colts' defense is terrible. I think that oh, yeah. uh, you know, Andrew Luck's going to have to uh, do like Peyton did uh, back, you know, the Super Bowl years and, uh, and uh, you know, try to score 40 points a game because the defense is just horrendous. Uh, the one thing the Colts did this year is they really addressed the offensive line for real, finally, and being able to see Andrew Luck step up in the pocket for probably the first time in his pro career and actually have time to throw the football was uh, fun to watch. You know, it just – you think of, of if Ryan Grigson had done this years ago, uh, you know the Colts could be uh, have have hoisted a Super Bowl trophy already. Uh, it's just sad to see what uh, had to happen to Andrew Luck for them to finally address this, but they have, and uh, it was nice to see Andrew Luck get back out there and get to it and, and have time in the pocket and not have to uh, run for his life after three seconds because two defenders were coming up the gut at him. Um, you know, I, I think uh, I think it, it, uh, time will tell. I, I think he does have, uh, you know, having Jack Doyle. Uh, is, is going to help a lot uh, uh, with him. You saw some quick out passes, not only to uh, Doyle, but also to the running backs. I think that's going to be a new part of Andrew Luck's game, maybe more than it was before uh, as he gets more comfortable. Um, you know, and, and uh, seeing Andrew Luck, uh, you know, not uh, just get knocked around so much was, uh, was a nice thing to see, but uh, the Colts' defense is just freaking terrible. Well, they, they've got a lot of work to do, that, that's for sure. You know, guys, uh, and, and I'll start with you, uh, Rick, we didn't get a chance to talk about the Quentin Nelson yet. Uh, well, what are your thoughts? I thought he looked uh, pretty doggone good out there uh, in a Colts uh, uniform. Uh, I think he's exactly what the Colts needed to sure up that offensive line. If they get Costanzo back, I mean, we're talking about a completely different line than the one the Colts have had the past few years. So I think he looked really good. Uh he, He's still a rookie, but I think he handled himself pretty good. Um, Mo, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, I you know I thought that uh, Quentin Nelson was probably the most talented guy in the draft. Obviously, you never want to take a guard uh, as a number one overall draft pick. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's a guy who's a big, big guy. And if you look over the past few years, you know, guards and, and football started to make a lot of money because there's a lot of nasty defensive tackles that those guys are having to take on. So, uh, I, I think that uh, Nelson is as advertised. Uh, you know, he was the uh, the heart and soul of that Notre Dame line, and I think that he's a guy who's going to be a, a, a 10 to 12 year, maybe 15 year uh, starter and pro. Well, he, he reminds me a lot of uh, of Joe Thomas. You know, he doesn't need to be loud, and but he's just a big, mean, nasty dude who goes out and does his job. So I, I think that the Colts might have a future Hall of Famer on their hands. Uh, you know, barring injury, knock on wood for Quentin Nelson. So uh, go ahead, uh, Rick. Uh, what questions do you have uh, about fantasy football uh, or pre- preseasons overreactions, not distractions, but overreactions? Uh, in our title, where it was uh, preseason overreactions and and uh, fantasy football preview, Rick. So go ahead. What do you got for Mo? All right, Mo. Uh, I feel this way. I just want to get your thoughts too. I think maybe there should be no more than like two preseason games the NFL should do because you know college football doesn't have any preseason games. I mean it's off season, off season, off season. Notre Dame, Michigan. You know they get right into it. You know I I feel the NFL should be probably about, about the same way. They need a couple games to get in rhythm, I guess maybe but maybe. But I just don't feel like there should be any more than two preseason games. What are your thoughts about that? Well, you know, to me, the magic number seems to be three. You get uh, your first two to get your starters to knock the rust off, be hitting other guys. And I really think, though, that that last game is important to round out your roster, guys who are going to make special teams, guys who are going to make the end of that roster. So I I think there needs to be at least that third game uh, for guys who are trying to make the football team. The one thing that I I was thinking about the other night as I looked at a bunch of half-empty stadiums is that I really feel – like it, it, every ticket should be like ten dollars across the board. You know what I mean? Let's, because who wants to come out to a preseason right. game for more than the first quarter? Usually, unless you're a super fan who's into you know the depth chart and wants to see the fifth and sixth guys on the depth chart of their position. So I really feel the NFL is missing out uh, when they aren't doing you know like ten bucks across the board. If you look at spring training baseball, 
you'll see, you know, 99% of those seats full because they make it super cheap to come out and watch those guys. So I, I think that's where the NFL misses. Charging regular season prices for those games is asinine. And I, I think, but I think three is the magic number. Two for your, your uh, you know, your regular players to get up and get the rhythm and hit other guys. And then that third one really for your guys who are trying to make the team. Because, I mean, honestly, you look at 